Hello and welcome to this tutorial video. As a teaching assistant, you are going to be trying to help the student focus and progress with a given subject or topic area. However, getting from A to B in a subject isn't always straightforward. Generally, what studies have found is how much a student can learn is affected overall by how much they are willing to learn and what skills they have in learning itself. So really school is about trying to give students skills that actually help them become more self-developing, self-motivated and self-encouraging. With those skills they will be able to take responsibility for their learning for themselves and make better progress. I'm sure a lot of people who've gone through a range of different kinds of education will agree that you constantly have to upskill. Especially in the modern world, you need to be able to learn and adapt to new technologies. Not only do your students need to constantly upskill, but you will too. You will be learning language they use and technologies they may be used to as well as learning new methods to help them learn and all the while gaining new academic knowledge yourself. It will be a really exciting time. Some of the things that you're going to be teaching are not necessarily pure academic skills. We're just going to touch upon some research done by some American colleagues who are looking at seven different elements that are important in showing how ready a student is to learn and how ready they are to develop. For our purposes, this means how ready they are to function well in the school environment. So the first one is curiosity. They have to have an interest in what's going on around them and want to be part of it. They want to see the world as something they can interact with and see the world as something they can take part in. This is why, if you're a teaching assistant or a teacher, it's good to use anecdotes to bring real-life examples in to encourage curiosity. They also have to be able to communicate, so it's important that they are practicing communication in group work. You don't want them just listening to you the whole time and trying to absorb everything because that's the only skill they'll be learning. I'm not saying that listening isn't a useful skill, but they want to be able to learn to communicate too, so they can put across their ideas and be able to synthesize other people's ideas as well. They also need to have a degree of self-control. They have to be able to hold themselves back at the right time and also to have deferred gratitude. So basically being in a situation where they know that the time they're putting in might be unpleasant now, but they also know that later on it's going to have a payoff. It's important to bear in mind that self-control is also like a muscle which can be worn out. You'll find that some people are more patient at the beginning of the lesson, day or even term, and less so at the end. They also need to have a certain amount of confidence, because with confidence they have the ability to say, well, I can try this, I can do this, I can give it a shot, and they're ready to take that risk. Confidence, in that sense, allows a little bit of risk-taking which is good for learning. Without confidence, students might be unwilling to try in the first place, then miss out on those learning experiences, and then they may retreat into themselves. The next one is cooperation, so the give and take of how we get by in our daily lives. A student also has to have what is referenced as intentionality, so they have to have the motivation and courage to try and start something to get the outcome that they want. They have a choice in this, so as a teaching assistant, you have to ensure that they are encouraged to have that intention and make that start. The last item we're going to look at is relatedness. Now, this is basically the student's ability or our ability to connect, link and harmonise. Basically, make that connection with any giving thing. This could be connecting with people or ideas and how we actually learn from them and use that as information. It is also how well we can relate things to other situations and contexts and how well we can relate on a personal level as well. You're not going to find a way of teaching all the seven elements in a direct way. You're not going to say, OK, today we're working on your confidence. What we have to do with all of these is engineer situations where the students are testing these personal development skills. So, as an example with the curiosity, you can't explicitly try to make someone curious about things but you can set up situations through stories and opportunities for moments where things start to click and inspire. Even through your classroom setup, you can make students more curious and want to learn, perhaps by having interesting displays or books available. Let's use confidence as another example. You have to make it okay for students to get things a little wrong or to go a little over in time. This gives students the confidence to have a go. If I was teaching cooking, I'd want quite a lot of curiosity 
and students to have the confidence to try different things. They're going to get it wrong sometimes. There's going to be too much of this or too little of that. They will test and use their curiosity and they will start to refine it and learn what they need to do next to improve. One of the nicest things you'll come across working with people, especially with students, is whenever they say something like, I didn't know I could do that, but now I've grown in confidence, or I wouldn't have tried that a month ago, or I would never have been able to do that a while back. And that's the kind of key thing that you're looking for. All of these soft skills that we've mentioned that you've got to try and create opportunities for really help students get towards that moment where they feel like they've progressed and developed. It's great when they've become more confident and they communicate better and they intentionally go about starting and doing things independently. So, by thinking about the soft skills, you can open up a path or doorway for them to go on their journey. When you're setting up your lessons or you're working with a student one-to-one, -one, put yourself in a situation where you try and think, OK, which of these avenues am I going to be asking these students to develop and draw upon today? Finally, try to think about ways in which you can offer all these in a range of sessions and lessons, making them part of your bigger picture. Thank you. I'll see you in the next video.